Hey everybody, this is Eugene Morris with the Brotherhood of Gaming, and welcome to my review of Mega Man 6. Yeah, <laughs> I've actually done six reviews of Mega Man games. I can hardly believe it myself. Well, this one's actually a pretty important title because this game represents the swan song for Mega Man on the original NES. You know, at this point, Mega Man was kind of the last man standing when it comes to major mascots on the original Nintendo, as other ones like Mario and Link have already graduated to the Super Nintendo. In fact, Mega Man's own spin-off title, Mega Man X, debuted on the Super Nintendo before this one came out for the original NES. So, what did Capcom have in store for the Blue Bomber before he sails off to that second star to the right and straight on until morning? Let's find out! Here's my review of Mega Man 6. In the year 2000 AD, the first robot fighting tournament in history is about to take place. It will be bigger than Street Fighter, with competitors all over the world about to battle it out to see who is the world's finest. Suddenly, the sponsor of the tournament, a mysterious Mr. X, who is the leader of the X Foundation, whoever they are, reprograms the eight robots competing in the tournament. They are now all placed under his control. And his goal? World domination. Of course. Mega Man and his friends set off to defeat the evil Mr. X and save the world. Once Mega Man dispatches the eight robots, he sets off for Mr. X's castle. After taking out three sub-bosses, Mega Man faces off against Mr. X in his X Crusher. Once Mega Man topples it, it's just him and X one on one. Here is where he reveals his true identity. It's me, Austin! Oh, son of a bitch! It's me, Austin! It was me! All along! Yep, it was Dr. Wily the whole time. I know, you're shocked. Well, Mega Man tracks Dr. Wily to his newly constructed fortress. Mega Man then goes through a couple more sub-bosses and a boss rush mode to deal with Dr. Wily once more. First up is two versions of his Wily machine, and then the Wily capsule itself. Some patience, well-timed jumps, and a precise hit or two, and Dr. Wily is defeated for the sixth time. And, oh yes, we finally have captured him! After giving us the slip for the past three games, Mega Man is at last able to haul his old ass back to jail. The world can once again rest easy, as this Nintendo chapter of Mega Man comes to a close. So how is this game story? Well, once again, we're going with the whole false villain angle from the last two games. But when you do think about it, here it does make sense. Because he's a wanted villain, he would have to go undercover in order to get access to the best robots available in order to take down Mega Man. So while his story is just as silly as the last two, it's strangely appropriate. And the ending of Mega Man finally capturing him and sending him to jail is very satisfying nonetheless. So now the robot roll call. We have Flame Man, Blizzard Man, Plant Man, Racially Insensitive Man, Yamato Man, Night Man, Centaur Man, and Wind Man. The rules of the game remains the same as the previous ones, as you can face off against any eight robots in any order, beat the level, and collect their powers, and the bosses have certain weaknesses to them, etc. Now I really dig the designs of this batch of robot masters as well. Once again, Capcom teamed up with Nintendo Power, allowing fans to submit villain designs for the game. But this time, fans in North America also got in on the action. Over 200,000 submissions were made, with these eight being chosen. They are pretty goofy, but fun and appropriate for the Mega Man series. The powers that you can receive from defeating the bosses I also find to be an improvement over previous titles, as they feel more useful in a general sense. As in, you can use them more frequently during the levels themselves as you travel through them. Some of my favorites include Flame Blast with its residual damage and Blizzard Attack with its spread range. Since the robots came from different spots on the globe, there is more variety to the stages and it pays off as Mega Man 6 has some of the best backgrounds in the series to this point. From an ice level to a forest level and a castle, they're all gorgeous to look at. The levels are all pretty much well constructed, with the exception of Plant Man stage. You see, there's this annoying spring section that you have to navigate, and it sucks. As for Mega Man's arsenal, he's pretty much just rocking the same weaponry and abilities from the last game, 
which includes the souped up charge shot, the slide ability, and of course his allies. Flip Top Eddie provides extra power ups from extra lives, health regeneration, power fillers, and E tanks. And Beat can also be acquired by locating the four letters that form his name. You can acquire them by using alternate routes to get the stage bosses. When you beat them, you can get a letter. Many levels have different pathways, and by choosing them, you can get some power ups as rewards. Some are easier to get than others, however. Damn it. But the big addition here are the Rush Adapters. In Mega Man 6, there is no Rush Coil or Rush Jet. Instead, when you beat the required boss, Mega Man will do a Super Sentai style merge with Rush to gain two new forms, Power Mega Man and Jet Mega Man. For Power Mega Man, you have this sort of short range blast. And when powered up, it can inflict a lot of damage, even break down barriers to reveal more goodies. Power Mega Man does give up some mobility. For example, you can't slide with it, but it's still a worthy trade-off. As for Jet Mega Man, he has the ability to fly short periods of time. You know, it kind of reminds me of Princess Peach's ability in the Super Mario Bros. games. It may not allow you to go very far, but it can still be really useful, especially when in a room filled with spikes. It's still not as good as Rush Jet for Mega Man 3, but I guess they decided that was too overpowered, so that form of the Rush Jet never was really brought back. But still, Jet Mega Man is pretty cool. Honestly, make a beeline to get these powers soon. They help out a great deal and are a lot of fun to use. The soundtrack for Mega Man 6 is yet again another winner. The music for these games never falter, as some are better than others, for sure, but they're all pleasing to the ears. You know, Mega Man 6 was to me a very nice send off to the NES Mega Man series. Now, like the previous game, though, it's not very difficult. Here, it's due to the fact that you get an abundance of E tanks, which can help make the Wily Castle levels kind of a breeze. But what it lacks in challenge, I believe it just makes up in pure fun. Honestly, I think this is my second favorite Mega Man game of the classic Nintendo series. The game is beautiful to look at with its stage designs and character models. The level layout also seems quite fair and reasonably put together. Except for this part. This part. The new abilities are incorporated nicely into the action as well, with the robot powers and the rush adapters. From top to bottom, Mega Man 6 is just a fun game. And you know what? It might actually be a nice place for newbies to the Mega Man series to jump in. Overall, it was a nice capper to the NES series. Well, there you have it. The end of an era. The final Mega Man on the original Nintendo, Mega Man 6. You know, I'm very grateful that I had a chance to play and review these games, and I'm very thankful that you guys and girls came on this little adventure with me. I'm very appreciative. Now, as we all know, Mega Man would last way beyond the Nintendo era. And I look forward to checking out those games in the near future. Until then, I'm Eugene Morris representing the Brotherhood of Gaming. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you next time. And until then, keep on gaming. Hey there, everyone. Did you like this video? If you did, why not give us a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment and watch some more of our stuff? Also, if you really want to keep up with the Brotherhood of Gaming, such as myself, William Morris, or Eugene, you should really follow us on our Twitters. Links provided below so you can see what's coming up in the future. And since, you know, we have to play these games sometimes and record them, why not join us on our Twitch page where you can hang out with all of us as we do so and chit-chat about the games that we love so much. 
Lastly, if you want to help keep our dreams alive, you can support us any number of ways, either by continuing to view our videos, like them, share them with all your friends and family and your peeps and your girlfriends, or you can also join our small Patreon and throw all your spare cash away. We'll even give you a shout out. Once again, thank you all and have a wonderful day.